I would like to here again state that 106 is not, as is commonly believed, a basic predator. On par with an advanced shark, SCP-106 is a sentient being, albeit a totally alien one. SCP-106 appears to be aware of several things beyond the scope of pure instinct and genetic memory. SCP-106 consistently breaches at moments where recovery and containment are most difficult. A fox may see his way out of a trap, but only a man will wait for his captors to look away to escape. Dr. Alok from his paper on sentience in contained humanoids. They say that patience is a virtue. If this is true, it's the only virtue that SCP-106 has in spades. The anomaly known as the Old Man had been well-behaved for months, sitting cross-legged in the center of his containment chamber, his lipless mouth molded into a slight grin. The Old Man had a reptilian-like calm to him, never truly inactive, just waiting. And nobody else can wait for quite as long as him. He could go for years without so much as twitching if he wanted to. But not today. Today was special. There were no clocks and no calendars in SCP-106's cell. But that was fine. He remembered the last day they locked him back up. And he'd been counting ever since. Seconds, minutes, days, months. The old man had all the time in the world. And today, it was all about to pay off. October 31st, All Hallows' Eve, the night when ghosts, goblins, and demons come out to play. The old man almost chuckled at the thought of it. What a perfect day for a containment breach. One of the Foundation technicians observing 106 from a control room monitor spilled his coffee when the old man got up and started walking towards the wall. Alarms went off and guards were dispatched as a large, dark stain expanded on the wall of the containment chamber and 106 walked through it. Not that any amount of armed response would do them any good. The bullets passed right through 106's inky flesh as he strolled down the corridor towards the exit. He killed two guards and a researcher on his way out, just for the fun of it. He'd been a well-behaved creature for a long time now. He'd earned an evening of letting his purely metaphorical hair down. And when 106 decides to have a night of good fun, horror is always sure to follow. This is the tale of one of SCP-106's most infamous and horrifying containment breaches. Be warned, the following isn't for the faint of heart. You're about to learn why SCP-106 is still one of the most feared anomalies in Foundation containment. Immediately, the containment site dispatched three of its best field agents, Agent Park, Agent Wang, and Agent Drac. Their task was simple, locate SCP-106, minimize potential casualties, and distract the sadistic anomaly long enough for reinforcements to come and contain the creature once again. For the last several years, these agents would eat, sleep, and breathe all things 106 in preparation for a moment just like this. They'd been drilled over and over again on everything from the creature's behavior to the worst-case scenario of what to do if you get pulled into its nightmarish pocket dimension. They were as trained as a person possibly could be for this situation and fitted with state-of-the-art foundation equipment to boot. And yet, they were still terrified. They passed through the streets of the nearest city, where containment experts believed 106 was most likely to head after his escape. People of all ages, dressed in Halloween costumes, were out enjoying the night. Child-sized superheroes were hanging out with even smaller villains. Horror movie slashers were sharing drinks with cops and nuns. Countless candy-carrying zombies wandered through the streets. None of them had any idea of the true horror that walked among them. The three agents went over their training silently in their minds. 106 was intelligent, more intelligent than anyone back at the Foundation really gave it credit for. It had planned this. It knew that it could blend in among the costume monsters that were sure to be out tonight. Nobody would be able to tell the difference until it was too late. One such person was a young woman named Alice. Dressed up as an angel, her experience that night would be far from heaven sent. Her boyfriend had made the always classy move of breaking up with her right before they were supposed to head to a Halloween party, leaving her in a fit of emotional distress and embarrassment. 
Over the course of the next several hours, she obsessively reflected on her ex-boyfriend's audacity and lack of empathy towards her, burdening her mind and filling her head with anxiety. His last words, I'm sorry, it's over, gradually became louder and louder in her thoughts as she stumbled in sadness away from the noise of the streets towards a thicket of trees. She was in such despair she could barely stand, and as she staggered through the vegetation, she didn't even notice the shuffling of footsteps behind her, or that they were getting closer and closer and closer. Alice tripped and caught herself against a nearby tree. That's when she noticed a sudden burning sensation on the skin of her hand. She looked up and saw that her hand was now coated in a sticky tar-like substance. Whatever it was, it seemed to be eating away at the tree, and she could hear the hiss of the corrosive liquid as it melted the skin of her hand. A twig cracked beneath her and she turned to see the rotting old man staring at her with a malicious grin. She screamed and began to run, but the alcohol had robbed her of her coordination. She tried as hard as she could to escape while cradling her burning hand, but it wasn't enough. She felt a spike of excruciating pain rock her nervous system. The old man had reached into her back like a man operating a puppet. His long, burning fingers dripping with corrosive grease had melted through her skin and grabbed her by the spine. She screamed in pain, but she was too far away. Not a soul could hear her, and the only creature that could didn't have anything resembling a soul. The creature grabbed her and pulled her into its blistering embrace. It smiled the whole time, bearing every rotten tooth. It held her in place, burning the rest of her body as the two of them sank into the ground together, more acidic sludge pooling at their feet. Alice screamed on, and SCP-106 loved her all the more for it. The screamers were its favorite. By the time Agent Drac, Parks, and Wang found Alice, it was hard to know that this had once been a human. But they knew one thing for certain, that this was the work of the old man, and they suspected that he wasn't close to being done with his campaign of Halloween terror. Next came a little boy named Jason and his unfortunate friends. They were dressed as the Justice League, with Jason leading the group as Batman, all of them wearing costumes that made them feel like true heroes. It had been a good night, their bags heavy with candy. As they walked down an alleyway they'd passed through countless times on their way home from school, they had no idea what was waiting for them. A long, gnarled hand dripping with black ooze suddenly shot out of the wall and grabbed the boy dressed as Superman. He screamed as he was pulled towards the ooze, his braces shining in the moonlight, and kept screaming until he disappeared into the solid brick wall. The rest of the Justice League broke into frightened screams and scattered, but they weren't fast enough. Hands kept emerging from the wall, grabbing the children, burning them, pulling them into the dark. Only Jason got away, running and screaming as his friends were yanked into the void. But no one gets away from the old man that easily. A black puddle formed on the ground in front of Jason, and the old man rose out of it, still grinning its malicious, spiteful grin. Jason fell to the ground, his legs giving out from the fear. But the old man didn't move. He just stared at him, sizing him up, deciding what type of torment would yield the most twisted pleasure. The creature lifted something up to its mouth, something that might have been mistaken for a piece of Halloween candy from a distance. But Jason knew better. It was a tooth, and Jason could recognize the shining braces still stuck to it. The old man put the tooth in his mouth and crunched it like a jawbreaker as Jason almost passed out from the sheer terror of watching it. To this day, nobody knows why the old man spared Jason, but when Agents Drac, Parks, and Wang found the boy, the only survivor from the massacre of his friends, he was gripping the metal fragment from Billy's tooth so hard that it was embedded into his palm. But the night still wasn't over yet. The old man still wanted to have just a little bit more Halloween fun. One little boy couldn't join in on the Halloween adventures all his friends were having. He was stuck at home sick with a stomach flu that had been going around at school. All he could do was sit and watch scary movies as his mother answered the door, passing out candy to the trick-or-treaters that he wished he could join. 
He sighed as he heard his mom at the front door giving candy to pirates, zombies, and vampires. Tomorrow would be even worse when he was forced to watch his friends eating their candy and reminiscing about all the fun that he wasn't involved in. His self-pitying was interrupted when he heard his mother open the door to another trick-or-treater, but this time, there was no exchange of words or candy, just a long, blood-curdling scream. The little boy quickly got up to investigate, his heart pounding in his chest. The sound of his mother's pain kept echoing down the hall as the heavy footsteps of something else approached. It rounded the corner and the little boy saw it in all of its horrifying glory. Like something out of one of the old horror movies he had been watching, only worse. It was the rotting old man dragging his dying mother along with one hand that was stuck right into the flesh of her chest and grabbing her by the rib cage. He screamed and ran upstairs towards the bathroom, the only room in the house with a lock. He could hear the plodding footsteps of the creature following him up the stairs, followed by the sickening sound of what must have been the old man dropping his mother's body. The little boy slammed the bathroom door shut, locked it and collapsed against the wood. His face was hot and sticky with tears, but at least he was safe for the moment. Surely someone had heard his mother's screams and would come to save him. As he was imagining the police bursting through the front door and gunning down the monster, he heard a hissing sound coming from above him. He looked up and saw the face of the old man melting through the door and smiling at him from above. He tried to scream, but the monster opened its mouth and a tide of corrosive liquid hit him in the face. Moments later, someone did burst through the front door, but it wasn't the police. It was the three agents drawn to the old man's location by a trail of violence and acidic black mucus. And as far as 106 was concerned, this was a great thing. He had just finished breaking his last set of toys, and the new ones were here right on schedule. Park fired at the creature, but it wasn't enough to save Agent Drac. He was standing just a little too close, and underestimated how fast the creature could move. Before he knew it, he was being dragged into a messy portal in the wall by an entity that was beyond his darkest nightmares. When he woke up, he was in the one place that anyone who knows about SCP-106 hopes never to find themselves. The pocket dimension, that labyrinth of twisting, rotting hallways where the old man has total dominion. You'd rather be in hell under the care of the devil himself than end up there. Agent Drac encountered horrors beyond conception before he finally, mercifully, died at the old man's hands. No weapons or training could save him. No amount of effort could dig him out of this hole. He ran through the halls for four whole days before SCP-106 finally got bored and started taking him apart. But to Agent Drac, those four days felt like a wretched eternity. When they eventually found SCP-106, he was standing in a field stomping on pumpkins out of boredom. He submitted to containment with relatively little difficulty, as Foundation field agents used high-intensity lights to subdue him. Cleanup crews applied amnestics and generated cover stories. Everything about the Halloween night massacre was swept under the rug. Back in containment, SCP-106 once again sat cross-legged on the floor of his cell, sorting a little collection of his victim's teeth like Halloween candy. He sat and smiled, mulling over the memories of his delightful Halloween night. He'd be fine for another few months now. He could just sit and enjoy the thoughts until the Foundation got bored and loosened the leash again. 106 is a patient monster. When the time came, he'd be ready. He was always ready. Now go check out SCP-001 when day breaks, and SCP-3280 after the storm for more terrifying tales from the SCP Foundation.